Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the great pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast. That's Matt Shipman. How are you today, Matt? I am okay. I assume there's no post-derby blues for you, Brian Zipsy, after your handicapping performance in the, for the derby. I appreciate that, Matt. Yeah, Mystic Dan was uh, one of the two long shots that I uh, keyed in on, so I was happy with the result there. Um, more importantly, uh, a great result for the uh, trainer jockey duo of Kenny McPeak and Brian Hernandez. BJ Hernandez Jr., a uh, really nice guy, and I was happy to see him finally break through with an incredible weekend. But Matt, let's uh, let's get right to that Kentucky Derby. I, I think it was one of the uh, more exciting stretch runs that we've seen in the Derby in a long time. There's a, a there's a photo right at the wire or right near the wire. Mystic Dan desperately holding on on the rail, Matt. Um, you could say that there were three deserving winners of this Kentucky Derby. Only one can win unless it's a dead heat. Mystic Dan got his nose on the wire first, but uh, a really good performance by all three horses. Yeah, that's for sure. And then what an amazing photo from our friends at uh, Eclipse Sports Wire. Uh, I don't know where this camera w was, but uh, you, uh, I don't know, when I was watching the race live, uh, you knew that it was close uh, at the finish, but I, I never got the feeling that it was this close. And you can see the little gap right there in the rail where the uh, finish line actually is. And wow, uh, uh, that is an amazingly close finish. Yeah, yeah. Well, three horses, uh, two noses apart on the finish. Uh, so a, a thrilling finish. And of course, it was the 18 to 1. 18 to 1 long shot. Mystic Dan. I, to tell you the truth, Matt, I thought he'd be a little bit higher. I think maybe the uh, in the Derby, it seems like there are a lot of people betting for less than full handicapping reasons. And uh, Mystic Dan might have been one of the more popular names to bet here. So 18 to 1, still great odds. Uh, nice, exact, and nice trifecta, superfecta with horses made sense. How about this, Matt? I, I don't know about you, but w w when I saw the Japanese horse run well on Friday, but it, it made me worry about the Japanese horses in the Kentucky Derby just a little bit more. Um, okay. I, I, I can, I can hear you saying that it certainly didn't uh, uh, have any, uh, have any effect on me. Um, but, but clearly that was the best performance from a Japanese horse, the best performance from a horse coming out of the UAE, UAE Derby, all of the things that we talked about that seemed like, uh, difficulties for uh, the Japanese horse seem to go away in that race. Yeah, they, they sure did. Uh, Forever Young really been on an amazing schedule going to Saudi Arabia, going to Dubai, and then going to, uh, uh, of course, Louisville, Kentucky mm -hmm. here for the Kentucky Derby. A big performance by Forever Young to be third. A lot of people after the rest race said he was the best horse uh yeah you you could make a case for him it, certainly you can make a case for sierra leone who had to wait on, on the turn and then had to go extremely wide sierra leone lugging in the entire stretch onto for forever young much of the stretch uh sierra leone just seems like a horse who's prone to lug in and as well he's he continued to run the entire stretch as he's done every race uh, that's an issue, and, and that might have cost him the race, or it might have cost Forever Young the race. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and Brian, he is still a lightly raced horse, and uh, with a trainer of the quality of Chad Brown, that should be something that they can work on. Although he does have a little bit of a unique running style, and uh, maybe that contributes to the lugging in. Yeah, all, all true. I, I thought Sierra Leone ran a big race, considering, again, uh, he had to come off the inside. He had to wait at a key point. I thought Forever uh, Young got the jump on him, heading into uh, or, or spinning out of the turn or uh, uh, midway through the turn. And I, I think that uh, helped 
uh, Forever Young's chances to beat Sierra Leone. Sierra Leone had to run wide and came big. Uh, Forever Young, of course, was not helped by Sierra Leone's antics during the stretch, and there easily could have been a disqualification changing the uh, second and third place finishers. Forever Young, straight back to Japan, Matt. A uh, little surprised that there was no claim of foul, but probably something cultural about that decision. Uh, but uh, what did you think? Should Sierra Leone have come down and been placed third in this Kentucky Derby? Well, the, uh, you say you were a little surprised that uh, uh, the Japanese connection didn't claim foul. I was a little surprised that the inquiry sign didn't go up, Brian. I don't care whether you're going to disqualify or not, um, but the how could the, the inquiry sign not go up after that stretch ride? Yeah, yeah, it, it, it's interesting. And, and maybe the Kentucky Derby and even a little bit of backlash from uh, uh, when maximum security was taken down from the win a few years ago had something to do with uh, the stewards not putting up the inquiry. But uh, uh, a, a little bit interesting there. Um, as I said, Forever Young headed back to Japan. Sierra Leone is uh, certainly going to wait for the Belmont at Saratoga five weeks after the Derby. We we know that to be true. Mystic Dan, we are still waiting to see if he's headed to the Preakness. Matt, the, the, one of the reasons I liked him, Mystic Dan had run big performances, a couple of them uh, in his career. One was at Churchill Downs. I, I, I liked that. I really liked his Southwest win, obviously, but that came on a wet track. And I was one of those people who saw a lot of issues for Mystic Dan in the Arkansas Derby when he ran third. Um, McPeak has a big decision. McPeak and ownership uh, ha have a big decision to make in the Preakness. One of the reasons I think they're hemming and hawing, it's been a good sign that he's bounced back from this Kentucky Derby uh, performance well. But one of the reasons I think they're having a tough time saying, yes, we're going on to Pimlico for sure, is that uh, early in his career, he didn't come back on short rest very well uh, uh, after that Churchill Downs maiden romp in fast time, brought back 13 days later, and he didn't do great. So that's one thing I think McPeak worries about running after only two weeks between the Kentucky Derby and the Preakness. Yeah, uh, um, it, it's, you know, a different world right now uh, in the Triple Crown for sure than the Triple Crown world that you and I grew up in, uh, the uh, uh, the the unwillingness to come back after two uh, two weeks rest. Uh, I mean, horses don't come back on two weeks rest very often at all at this point. But you are talking about the chance to 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 run a, to win a Triple Crown and a Triple Crown, Brian, where he's not going to have to run a mile and a half if he was fortunate enough to win the second leg. Yeah, I agree with that, Matt. I, I do think it's an advantage. I think a mile and a quarter or shorter suits Mystic Dan, the son of Golden Sense, as we look ahead to a possible bid for the Triple Crown. But first things first, we have to see if he runs in the Preakness. I, I, I think he will. My opinion is that McPeak and team – will decide to run him in the Preakness. Uh, McPeak is a trainer that doesn't uh, shy away from running his horses back. Uh, maybe not D. Wayne Lucas type of uh, uh, running them back or running them often, but uh, McPeak has never shied away. So I think I think that's going to win the day over the fact that he had a two-year-old race uh, where he didn't bounce back particularly well off a short rest. Let's take a look at that chart one more time, Matt. As we said, 18 to 1. As we said, nose and a nose apart, the first three horses. Catching Freedom was a clear fourth. I thought Catching Freedom ran a very good race. Uh, uh, another horse we both liked in here. Uh, he had to wait just a, just a bit uh, for a opening or half an opening to open up before he busted through on the rail with Flavian Prad, uh, a good overall race for a solid rallier, Matt, and catching freedom was well ahead of the rest in fourth place. Yes, uh, uh, Brian, you know, and, and taking a look at the chart and, you know, hindsight is 50, 50 and it's easy to talk about the race afterwards, but we've seen this scenario in uh, Derby, the scenario that played out, uh, last weekend in that if you look at the chart here the top four 
uh, leaders of the race early on all finished at the back of the pack uh, and and closers came up and uh, uh, were right there at the end, um, Brian. And, you know, it, it's easy to look at this and say, well, you know what? It was probably a matter of a field where, I don't know, maybe you could pick out four or five horses that had a chance realistically to go a mile and a quarter and the rest didn't. And you know what? I think that's what happened here. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that has something to do with it, Matt. Obviously, there was a, a a solid a solid to strong pace, early pace in here, and it was contested. Um, uh, I don't think the track was necessarily benefiting horses coming from behind. So the fact that this happened maybe points out what you're saying right now a little bit more a uh, mile and a quarter. They didn't finish particularly fast. 203 and a fifth was the final time there. So uh, yeah, maybe a mile and a quarter was uh, a lot for most of the horses in the race, uh, save the top four or five, by the way, number five, T.O. Password, only two starts in his career in Japan, uh, got off to a pretty slow start farther back than they probably wanted. And he rallied uh, again, a, a pretty far away, away from the top four, but he was the one running best of the rest for sure in the stretch, and he got fifth. I thought Resilience, the wood winner, ran a good race, just came up a little bit short in the end. And, of course, we need to talk about Fierceness, who is one of those horses, you, as you mentioned, who was part of that pace and, and faded. Johnny V certainly wasn't persevering down the stretch when he knew Fierceness was coming up empty, but uh, another in-and-out performance. Fierceness... Uh, <laughs> Very, very good every other race and and very, very average. Uh, looks to me, Matt, that he just doesn't want to deal with adversity. Yeah, I don't know. Um, uh, but certainly uh, he got into what looked like good position in the beginning of the race and then just came up empty. Yeah, you could say about fierceness, it, 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 the, the, the early fractions were, were solid to fast for a mile and a quarter race and he was uh contested for sure but yeah i agree with you he he had good position as you predicted uh heading into the first turn on the back stretch and then when they uh, were turning for home that that was it fierceness had nothing left as the three to one favorite uh of course part of the big story here from the kentucky derby is uh that there's brian hernandez jr celebrating Aboard Mystic Dan and uh, Hernandez McPeak, two Kentucky-based, uh, Louisville-based trainer and jockey who who just had a, a a dream weekend. McPeak was confident in both of his horses. Mystic Dan, the long shot, Torpedo Anna, one of the horses who figured in the Oaks. But uh, a really incredible weekend for the pair. Yeah, that's for sure. And, you know, before we leave the Derby, I do want to uh, make note of the performance of Honor Marie. I think if you want to pick out a horse that maybe got the worst trip in the race, it was Honor Marie, who uh, uh, was banged around significantly early, was literally in 20th and last uh, uh, by the still at the third call. Uh, in the race and then ran nicely to get up to finish. I think it was uh, eighth, Brian. So uh, um, I think Anna Marie uh, ran notably in the Derby. Yeah, you, you, you get nothing for eighth place. Uh, figuratively, you get nothing for eighth place, Matt. But uh, certainly, I agree with you. Honor Marie uh, really had a little chance considering the trip and uh, another live long shot for, for both of us. Uh, he was the other long shot that I was betting in the Kentucky Derby, and I know you had him on your ticket. So uh, uh, tough luck for Honor Marie. Congratulations to Kenny McPeak and Brian Hernandez. And, uh, of course, uh, their weekend started on Friday with a big win in the Kentucky Oaks. Now, this was a sloppy track, Matt. Um, probably has something to do with it, but but I, I, I think I'll toot my own horn a little bit. My top horse won and my second pick finished second. Uh, you liked both just FYI, certainly, and Torpedo Anna. Uh, track or not, they look like the best two horses in and coming out of the Kentucky Oaks to me. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, My uh, my top three horses finished uh, one, two, and four. But, you know, there was no drama, Brian, in uh, 
in the Kentucky Oaks, Torpedo Anna was a dominant winner and looked like a winner every step of the way. Yeah, Torpedo Anna. There was speed in this race on paper, but Torpedo Anna, and I think that was part of the plan on, on the sloppy track to get her out and right there early, and she was able to take the lead. And the best Philly won. Uh, big performance coming in, of course, in the fantasy. She's now four wins and one second out of five starts. Torpedo Anna, an easy winner by almost five lengths on the sloppy track at Churchill Downs on Friday in, in the most prestigious race for three-year-old Phillies of the year. Matt Torpedo Anna has certainly taken over the division as the leader. Just FYI, the undefeated champion as a two-year-old, the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies winner has now come back with two nice performances. She quickly moved up on the back stretch into position looked like she had a shot turning for home second best but clearly second best yep yeah absolutely brian just fyi uh we'll expect her to move on to saratoga and the acorn and i think that's where we'll see torpedo anna reappear as well in the acorn uh belmont stakes win uh weekend at saratoga torpedo anna i, I think would be a horse that you might suspect would uh, run in the Preakness. But uh, uh, there's Mystic Dan from the same stable out there. And there's also the fact that she was not nominated for the Triple Crown. And it's a pretty steep nomination fee, a late nominate or a supplemental fee, I should say, for the Preakness. So two reasons why we wouldn't see and we won't see Torpedo Anna in the Preakness. Yeah, that's for sure, Brian. Torpedo Anna uh, takes uh, over the division. Uh, the uh, three-year-old Phillies uh, will have to, the, the division will have to go through her. Uh, like I said, I think the sloppy track may have had a, a part of this, but I, I do think the best Philly won. But uh, we can't certainly uh, throw out uh, uh, just FYI moving forward and probably ways and means your other top three pick, Matt, who ran fourth uh, Bound to be a little short after such a little experience coming into the Kentucky Oaks. Yeah, uh, you know, I guess it was another frustrating weekend for Chad Brown uh, with Sierra Le Sierra Leone's close call uh, in the Derby, and then in uh, the Oaks, uh, Chad got uh, third and fourth. Yeah, third and fourth, regulatory risk, a long shot in third. The other Chad Brown, if you will, ran a good third uh, coming off a uh, uh, second place in the Gazelle. Ways and means maybe a little disappointing in fourth, but uh, uh, don't forget how well she ran at Saratoga last year. Ways and means, I think we will see more out of her. But uh, right now, the division belongs to the Oaks winner, the easy Oaks winner, the impressive Oaks winner, undefeated this year, the daughter of Fast Anna, Torpedo Anna. Again, Matt, what a weekend for uh, Kenny McPeak, trainer, Brian Hernandez Jr., jockey. All right, it's time we look ahead, Matt, and I think, I think it's still fluid. It, it really is fluid what we're going to see in the Preakness. We're taping the show Thursday morning, so we're nine days out from Pimlico, and uh, we're not sure who's going to run. We have a pretty good idea, and we're going to throw up uh, the most likely probables right now, and they include our early odds for the Preakness, a mile 316, $2 million at Pimlico next Saturday. Uh, it, it, it looks like to me, and I'm going to start the conversation with this, Matt, and uh, a lot of us may not like it, but it looks to me that Bob Baffert, this is his race to win or to lose, no matter whichever way you want to look at it. Whether Mystic Dan runs or not, it's Baffert's race to lose with the pair of Muth and Imagination. Yes, absolutely, Brian. Uh, Muth has, has had a lot of success uh, uh, in his career th thus far, as we know. Imagination was a very nice second in the Santa Anita Derby behind Stronghold. They are both coming into the race as fresh horses, which, you know, we can't necessarily say about uh, other uh, the other horses, uh, the ones that are coming out of the Derby and the ones that uh, uh, ran certainly a lot more on the Derby trail. Yeah, I agree with everything you said, especially Muth. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the likely favorite of Sonic Good Magic out of the... Uh, 
Uncle Mo, uh, Mayor Hoppe, not, of course, he was uh, purchased for $2 million as a two-year-old in training for, uh, for, for the Zedon stables and, uh, of course, sent to Bob Baffert. Uh, very good two-year-old, four races as a two-year-old, two wins, two seconds. They were all good performances, a great one winner at two in the American Pharaoh at Santa Anita. Of course, second behind Fierceness in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. Uh, he's been better at three early in the year, seven furlongs, San Vicente, an easy win. And then I think his best race, and, and, and I'm pretty confident in saying that his best race yet came uh, at Oaklawn Park when he was a, a, a solid, solid winner. Always looked like a winner in the Arkansas Derby, a field, of course, which included Mystic Dan, as well as just Steel, Timberlake, uh, some good horses there, and Form Patriot as well. In, in a solid Arkansas Derby. He was best. That's his best race yet. Now, as you say, he comes in fresh. Muth, the horse to beat in the Preakness Stakes. Yeah, and Bob Baffert is very good, Brian. Always has been very good about getting a horse at to 100% for a goal for a big race. And you got to believe that uh, uh, he's never had a bigger goal than uh, picking up uh, the Preakness uh following his uh, uh, inability to race in the Derby again. Yeah, yeah. He Well, he's won eight Preaknesses. He's been able to do it with Derby horses, Derby winners. Uh, but uh, last year, of course, he won with the fresh National Treasure. And I think Muth uh, certainly looks better on paper than National Treasure. Maybe imagination is a little closer to uh, uh, last year's winner, National Treasure on paper. This could be a stronger field than last year. Last year's greatness was not great. This this one is shaping up as probably not great either, but we could see Mystic Dan, the Derby winner, that instantly makes this a better field than last year's. Um, Mystic Dan, as I said, my feeling is he will run and he'll be the second choice behind Muth. I, I, again, I thought he had some trouble in the Arkansas Derby. So that fact that he was third, a well-beaten third behind Muth in the Arkansas Derby is a little bit uh, deceiving in my eyes. But I still think Muth is the favorite here. Imagination, another seven fit furlong horse to son into mischief. He's also ran six times. He's also finished first or second in every start, just like Muth. Uh, but of course, his... Uh, uh, Past performances are a little bit more checkered than than Muth, man. He's coming off that second place that we just started to talk a little bit about in the San Anita Derby. Edged out by Stronghold late, uh, but it was a good performance, and Imagination certainly is getting better as he heads into the Preakness. Yeah, absolutely, and Stronghold is a, Stronghold is a good horse. He may not be as good as uh, as Muth or, uh, or Mystic Dan, but but he's a nice horse. Yeah, yeah. Stronghold ran a decent race in the Derby. Um, didn't have a lot late down the stretch, but uh, the Californian-based uh, 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 Phil D'Amato trainee was seventh in the Kentucky Derby. And uh, yeah, not all that bad a performance by the Santa Anita Derby winner. And again, uh, him and Imagination put on a pretty good Santa Anita Derby where it was in doubt until the last uh, 20 yards or so that uh, Stronghold would get imagination. So you got the Baffert horses. You got Mystic Dan, the Derby winner now with three big wins in his career. Uh, 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 still a possible, still a question whether he'll run. We'll, we'll wait to see the decision from McPeak. Uh, we can talk about the rest of the horses on this list, the probables list, Nat. Uh, but first, I want to throw in one other name because after after the Kentucky Derby, uh, Brad Cox said Catching Freedom would not would not run in the Preakness. But uh, there are a lot of horses in this Preakness with uh, uh, speed or, or horses that want to be pretty near the lead. The two Bafferts certainly included. And Catching Freedom would be an interesting addition if they do decide to run. And, and the ownership team has told me that they are certainly considering it still. So Catching Freedom, I think, would be a big change or, or a big news if he suddenly joined the field that we have as maybe nine horses right now. Yeah, and I think another horse we should talk talk about in that category of uh, is is he going to race uh, in the Preakness is uh, is uh, Tuscan Gold for Chad Brown. Tuscan Gold was entered in the Peter Pan yesterday. Uh, which will be run on Saturday. So we will have to see. I know there's been plenty of talk about 
about Tuscan Gold going in the Preakness. And this is certainly another one of the other Chad Brown horses, Tuscan Gold is a horse i think that's uh, pretty talented brian that was that has certainly been overshadowed by his stable mate sierra leone uh he has only run three times and he had a very nice third place finish last time in that good field in the louisiana derby yeah yeah tuscan gold is an interesting horse and, and i brought up catching freedom as still a possible for the preakness and a horse that interests me being able to rally a little bit certainly tuscan gold can rally a little bit as well as you said we have to wait and see if he's scratched out of the peter pan certainly he won't run in the preakness if he runs in the peter pan as a chad brown trainee it, it just won't happen but uh if he is scratched if they decide to uh take a shot with this horse you're right three starts he was fourth behind sierra leone in his debut but uh, this year two really nice performances a maiden romp at gulfstream park going two turns earlier in the year and then as you say uh, uh catching freedom on marie two good horses were the only ones to uh, finish ahead of him in an 11 horse field in the louisiana derby at a mile 3 16th tuscan gold was running the entire stretch beaten less than two lengths uh and he's a horse who could rally a little bit too so uh, yeah catching freedom tuscan gold certainly horses who uh, will be interesting if if that's a big question mark right now if they're in the preakness field uh one horse we don't have to worry about uh, a question mark matt is uncle heavy and he's the only other horse i see who really wants to rally in this perspective Preakness field. Uh, trainer Butch Reed decided against the Peter Pan. He wasn't entered in the Peter Pan, uh, Saturday's Peter Pan at Aqueduct. Uh, so Uncle Heavy will be in the Preakness. And a lot of people are saying right now, Brian, who cares? Fifth in the Wood Memorial. But I, I think he's a little bit better than that, the Withers winner and a horse who rallies and a horse who's won stakes races, more than one stakes race. Uh, he would be an interesting long shot to me in this Preakness, especially if he's the only rallier in the field. Yeah, and clearly uh, trainer Butch Reed um, is looking for added distance for Uncle Heavy and thus the entry in the Preakness. Yeah, the son of social inclusion has finished off his race as well. I think he got a little bit too much in the wood when he was perhaps a lot long shot. Uh, local horse, Copper Tess, son of Copper Bullet, Gary Capiano. Uh, of course, that last name, very familiar. Uh, in, in the mid-Atlantic states in racing there. And Copper Tax is a horse, Matt, who's won four stakes races. He's won two stakes in a row. Uh, he failed outside of the mid-Atlantic when he uh, uh, tried in the Remsen late last year on an off track. He tried to start his year at Tampa Bay in the San, Sam F. Davis. Didn't run a lick in either one of those races, but then he comes right back to Laurel and wins two straight stakes, a winner of seven to 10, a local horse, you can't throw him completely out here. Yeah, no, I guess not. And and uh, I guess he'll be, you know, considered the local horse in the Preakness, although they are running at Pimlico as opposed to running at his home base, uh, Laurel. Yeah, three of his four stakes wins came at Laurel, the other one at Delaware. So uh, Pimlico uh, will be something that Copper Tox is trying to break through. But he's uh, certainly the Maryland horse in here here let's talk d wayne lucas a little bit matt just a lot of people jumped on his band before the derby uh the son of justified was part of that uh, uh group as you mentioned that did not fare so well after the first mile and just steal uh, a good example of that because just steal backed out to 17th in the derby um lucas not afraid to bring him right back a good second behind muth two starts back in the arkansas derby just steal a consideration in the Preakness? I don't know. I mean, we said going into the Kentucky Derby that if uh, Just Steel could get back to that nice performance in the Arkansas Derby, uh, uh, he could be interesting. I guess we kind of feel the same way. You know, he was second pressing the pace in the Derby for about six furlongs and then was uh, uh, pretty much done. Yeah, I, I didn't like him at all in the Kentucky Derby. I wasn't one of those bandwagon jumpers to the to the, to the Lucas horse in the Derby, but this would be a much better.
better spot for him for what it's worth. I, I still don't know if that is going to translate to a big run in the Preakness, but that's Lucas number one. Lucas number two, we're expecting Seize the Gray to come in, and Seize the Gray uh, certainly made his uh, large ownership uh, group, my racehorse, uh, 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 six or 700 owners, I guess, for Seize the Gray, uh, gave Lucas a pretty big win in the Pat Day Mile uh, on Saturday, Matt. That was uh, after a disappointing effort in the Bluegrass where he was seventh. That was a nice performance by the son of Arrogate. Yeah, I guess he liked the track at Churchill Downs a lot more than at Keeneland, the son of uh, Arrogate. A big win, and so, you know, uh, all those owners are going to be happy to see uh, uh, if they're – uh, if they can be one of the ones that represents uh, the horse in the paddock uh, uh, at the Preakness. Yeah, that's right, Matt. Uh, excitement, at least, uh, being a part of the Preakness. He's the gray. We'll have to prove that he's as good at a distance of, like a mile three sixteenths of the Preakness as opposed to the one mile Pat Day mile. But uh, a, a big performance there to win the Pat Day mile. The last horse that we haven't talked about yet uh, is uh, Mugatu, Matt, uh, son of Blofeld for trainer Jeff Angler. Uh, he says he's getting better, but he's only one of 12. Last time he passed horses in the stretch of the bluegrass to, to get to fifth, but I have a hard time finding much to say about his chances here in the Preakness. Yeah, Brian, and, you know, a fifth in the bluegrass may have been his best performance. Uh, uh, you know, he was eighth in the rush away and fourth in the in the Bataglia. It seems like this kind of quality stakes race is just uh, out of his realm. I, I would say out of his realm is a great way to describe it, Matt. I, I, I don't, uh, and it, certainly, yeah, the bluegrass. His last race was his best race yet, but... Uh, yeah, he's he's not one of the ones uh, who I would be considering really in the Preakness. Hey, Matt, that's our uh, Derby Oaks recap. Mystic Dan, big win by an O's over maybe two other deserving horses, uh, Sierra Leone and uh, uh, Forever Young. Uh, Sierra Leone, by the way, we didn't mention Tyler Gaffleone's ride in there. I, I think he was doing everything he possibly could to keep his horse straight. I think he got his uh, whip caught in the reins there late in the race. I have no problem with Ryder Tyler Gaffleon's ride in the Kentucky Derby. Um, just just bad luck in the Derby and a horse who wants to lug in. Yeah, yep. Uh, yeah, it was certainly uh, a battle for Gaffleon in that he was battling to get the win, but he was battling to 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 try and keep his horse going straight and and all that lugging in motion has got to detract from the forward momentum of the horse at least a little bit at, at least a little bit you'd think but he just keeps coming so who knows if sierra leone runs a straight course what happens if if either him or forever young are not in the race they probably pass mystic dan but the god the kentucky derby got smiled on mystic dan uh, getting through on the rail. Great ride by BJ Hernandez. Matt, let me get a parting shot from you before we close out this edition of Horse Center. Yep, here we go all along the uh, Triple Crown Trail. And and yeah, I think the field for the peak Preakness is shaping up okay, considering, you know, the 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 what's going on with the triple crown in the last, in the last few years. We'll see. We'll be back next week, Brian, and uh, we'll know what the field is uh, at our next edition of horse center. So we'll see everybody then. Yeah, that that's a, that's a great way of saying it, Matt. I, I, I hope it is a triple crown. Uh, um, and, and of course I mean by that mystic Dan is still eligible to win a triple crown by running in the greatness. That's what I'm hoping for. But uh Got to do what's best for the horse and uh, maybe catching freedom will join the fray too. I think that would be a, a very big news for this Preakness field as well. Uh, we also want to thank all of you viewers for watching every week here on Horse Center. We sure do appreciate it. If you haven't yet subscribed to the YouTube channel here at Horse Racing Nation, go ahead and do that. Turn on those notifications. Special thanks, of course, to Candace Curtis, our friend in the home office for the race graphics. Derby Wars, our sponsor, the best contest site out there. We didn't have a, a, a pace projector today, but uh, we recognize Time Form US because almost every other show we do use their great pace projections. For Matt and I, have a great week. Uh, good card Saturday at Aqueduct. 
And uh, we'll be back next week with, of course, our Preakness preview, analysis, suggested wagers. Hopefully you hit some uh, with those suggested wagers from the Derby and Oaks that uh, we did well with last week. We'll see you then right here on Horse Center.